the sweet taste of chocolate, and the fantastic tropical flavors of coconut. Oh yeah, guess what we're making tonight? We're making coconut brownies right here on the Chuck Wag Cowboy Show. <laughs> to another episode of the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show, hosted by yours truly, Chef Ron Locke. Coconut brownies, that's what we're making for you on this episode. And who doesn't like the taste, the sweet taste of chocolate? Three chocolates are going into this recipe. You'll see that in just a bit. And the great tropical flavor of coconut that's going to really just make these brownies moist and so flavorful. You will love this. You will love this. This has been an old recipe in my family for years, and I've tweaked it up just a little bit to kind of get it to a little bit more my style of what I like. Add a little bit more chocolate into it is really all I've really done to it, but it's pretty much the same recipe that my grandma had way back, way back over 100 years ago. So this goes pretty far back in our family. So that's what we're making for you tonight. Enough of me yakking. Let's get over to the ingredient roundup, shall we? All right. All right, we have a lot of them tonight, so we're going to try to work through this here as fast as we can, all right? So first, what we have here is two cups of sweetened coconut. Shredded coconut, you want to make sure you get sweetened, and uh, make sure, too, uh, in the package, sometimes what happens is it gets a little clumpy. Make sure that you just go and wash your hands first, but just, you know, get your hands in through there and unclump everything, because you don't want to have clumps when you're going to go ahead and prepare this uh, recipe, because it... Uh, would not be a good thing. You don't want to have a whole mouthful of coconut. You just want the essence of it, not the whole, you know, big chunk of it in your mouth. Because <laughs> that will, what's, what's going to happen if you don't break this up? Just give me a little tip there, all right? Because that sometimes can happen and happen with the package that we had here on this show tonight. All right, so we've got here two and a half cups of white sugar. We have here one and three quarters cups of all purpose flour. We've got here one third cup of cocoa powder, unsweetened of course, and then we have here, this is uh, two ounces of finely chopped unsweetened chocolate, baking chocolate, then we have here, this is two and a half ounces of bittersweet chocolate that's been fine, or coarsely chopped, coarsely chopped, and next we have here two eggs that we will beat up in just a moment. We have here one teaspoon of vanilla. I just love vanilla. That just really makes almost all of the desserts pop when you add that in. That calls for that kind of kind of little bit of a flavor to it. You know what I'm talking about on that. All right, then we got here three-fourths cup of olive oil. Now, olive oil isn't normally used in a lot of baking recipes. It's just you know regular canola oil or, or, or sun, sunflower seed oil, some kind of oil like that. The olive oil for this is going to give it, again, it's going to give it a little more of a tropical flavoring and a taste to it. It just has that little bit more of a savory, heady kind of a flavor that a regular oil just doesn't produce for this kind of recipe and the ingredients we're using. So that's why we're using olive oil for this, all right? All right. We've got here three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And lastly, we've got here some sea salt. And I have got here maybe about three or four tablespoons of that. I'm going to save that for toward the end of this recipe because we're going to do something a little unconventional to the uh, topping of this that you normally wouldn't see in brownies. Again, this brownie recipe has a lot of elements that you just don't normally see in a brownie recipe, but I'm telling you what, it is fantastic. All right, so, all right, well, there's your ingredients right there. Now, coming up, coming up right now, we're going to go ahead here in just a moment and start this process of mixing all this together. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and start layering, yes, I said layering, our brownie mixture and get that all set up for you. All right, so you can't miss that. Come on back. You are watching WYE The Network.
Well, all right, we're back, and we're going to go ahead and start constructing our coconut brownies for y'all on this episode here. And the first thing you want to go ahead and do is get yourself a nice, big, large bowl because we have a lot of ingredients, and you're going to need a large bowl to encompass all of those. All right, so we've got one here. First thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and start adding in our cocoa powder here. We're going to pour that in, and I'm going to go ahead and pour in. Now, what we've done here is we've got ourselves some boiling water. I'm going to pour this in and I'll stir this up and I'll explain what we're doing here in just a minute, but it's hot and I want to make sure we get that in first. So let me do that. I've got to measure this out here, so bear with me here a second. Uh, okay, and uh, what we're doing here is we're adding in a half a cup of boiling water and two tablespoons extra. Now, <laughs> Let me quick get this stirred up here because uh, we're going to whisk this through. We want to get this nice and smooth. Now, while I'm doing all this, a lot of this has to happen real fast because this boiling water has to make this all melt. The next, I'll explain this as, like I said, as we're going through. The next thing we need to do is add in our unsweetened chocolate here. And you want to get all this smooth. Now, you want to use a whisk for this, okay? And just make sure everything is nice and smooth here. I'm going to go ahead and hold on to it like this. I've got to hold on to the side of this so my camera can get a shot of all this that we're doing here. You're going to get a lot of these little pieces up on the top. and You just got to keep swirling them down to get this all nice and smooth. You don't want any chunks or anything in this portion of the recipe here, okay? That's very important. So. Right out of the chute, the first things, boy, I'll tell you, you know, when you're dealing with hot boiling water, you ain't got time to sit there and, and gab and, and meander. You need to get working right away. And you need to get this going. So, and it's so important to this brownie recipe that we get this very smooth consistency of these first couple ingredients with this boiling water. Once we get past that, well, we're dry as rain, man. It's all good. It's all it's all downhill from there. We're all uphill, I should say. <laughs> But uh, that's it. Just work your work your little work your little uh, bumps in here of the chocolate that you may still have. Man, I'm telling you, this smells. If you like chocolate, this reminds me of the time when I was in elementary school that we went to the Hershey's chocolate plant. Not, and I'm not pushing Hershey's or anything, but it just you know how different senses will give you different memories and the sense of smell is one of those great memories that will bring you back to something but I'll tell you what I can almost I can almost see myself back in that uh, candy processing area with that just heady smell of chocolate and fantastic all right so we've got that that's really smooth that looks good now what we're going to do next here is we're going to go ahead and start adding our next layer of ingredients. Now it really helps if you go ahead and set up like a conveyor belt of different ingredients, especially if you've got ones that are ingredient heavy like we have with here where there's you know more than four or five. You kind of want to set up your little, uh, your little uh, conveyor belt uh, of, of different ingredients so you can add them all together. This way you're not having to look back and forth at your recipe cards and such and uh, it makes it a lot easier. You got them in stages and sometimes like this recipe you've got to do things in stages so it's really important. Alright, the next thing we're going to do we're going to go ahead and add in our olive oil. That's going to give it some really really wonderful flavors. We're going to go ahead and add our two eggs that I off camera beat before we uh, added them in there to make it a little easier and our vanilla. Alright, now we're just going to go ahead and whisk this up a little bit, get these all going. What's going to start happening now is this is going to get a little thicker. Okay, it's going to start getting that batter look to it. But we got a lot more ingredients yet, so. <laughs> but it's getting thicker. Yeah, the olive oil definitely will do that for you. Okay, just get that all nicely mixed up, like so. Yeah, we're doing really good here. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the whisk out 
set that down a bit make sure I get all my chocolate off as much as I can anyway. Now this is a point where if you've got kids, <laughs> let them go ahead and have a little fun with this, okay? Because uh, trust me, when I was growing up, my mom, I'll tell you what, anytime she had a cook kitchen utensil that was anything layered with chocolate or anything such of the kind, I would definitely be first up in line to make sure I got that. So we're going to set that down. Now, push our ingredients down more. As I said, I work in a conveyor belt style here. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is add our sugar in. Now, you want to get yourself a spatula. I like to use a wooden spoon, but you can use a spatula as, as well, too. And just go ahead and add this in like that. All right. And we're going to start stirring this. The reason we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and switch up to this spoon is because it's going to start getting kind of thick and heavy now. All right. So the whisk is great when you're trying to get volume to things like chocolate because you want to have the volume in the chocolate, the little air bubbles in the chocolate to give this recipe volume as you're adding these other ingredients in. It kind of takes everything else in, all right? So that's why sometimes it's important when recipes ask to have you use certain types of kitchen tools, that's why. Because there's certain reasons why certain kitchen tools will give a certain sort of volume, as you will, or texture. All right? So anytime you're whisking something, you're putting volume or air into it. So if you ever see you have to use a whisk, that's why you're doing it, just so you know. All right? Our sugar's nicely mixed in there. Now we're going to go ahead and add our flour. And make sure, make sure you try to get all the lumps out. Sift it. If you've got a sifter, it's best to do that and just sift it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in a little bit at first because what's going to happen if I go crazy on this, all this flour is going to go start shooting out, okay? And that's what we don't want to have happen. So, you know, just kind of work around the sides and get it all at least moistened and then you can go ahead and have a little fun in here <laughs> and dig around. This will take you a couple minutes to get this. This flour is really going to thicken this. And now we're getting into a batter, okay? You will see at this point that as you stir this, the consistency is going to get like a cake or a brownie batter, okay? Now, I'm telling you what. You know what? There's a lot of box ingredient kinds of brownies out there in cakes. And you can, yeah, you know what? You can use the box flavors and the box kind of recipe kind of things that are out there like that. But you know what? There's nothing better. There's nothing better at all than making sure that you use whole ingredients. Why not? You know, don't take that much more. It's really not that much more expensive. And I'll tell you what, it turns out there's just a flavor to it that beats most of those box flavors. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. And if you've ever done cookie dough, it's the same way. You can buy cookie dough in the store. But, you know, there's nothing better than homemade cookie dough. Same thing. So baking really, I mean, you can, you can cheat a little bit, but if you, if you don't have to, don't do it, you know? All right, that flour is nicely mixed up now, and we're going to go ahead and add our salt in. Do that last here. Okay. Well, second to last, anyway. This is the second to last ingredient that we're going to be mixing together here. And again, I'm trying to keep this bowl as sturdy or stationary as I can because I've got my camera zoomed in on it and I want to make sure that y'all can see what I'm doing here on the close-ups. <laughs> Alright, get that all mixed in. Alright, now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this fantastic goodness of our bittersweet chocolate and like I said you coarsely chop this because we actually want these to be you know incorporated in little chunks like this because this is again something that's going to be fantastic when you're enjoying your brownie, you're going to get these explosions of this bittersweetness. That's, you just got to try it. I, I'm telling you, it's fantastic. So we're, now what you want to do with this, just fold it in. And folding is nothing but just taking from the bottom and working your way to the top. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Okay, just folding in just like that. Okay, just like that. Just getting it all nicely mixed in. All right, just like that. And that's good. That's good right there. All right. 
There we go, there's our mixture right there. Now, coming back, coming up next, we're going to go ahead and layer this into our 9 by 13 lightly greased pan that at this point you should probably go ahead and prepare and you should also at this point go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees because now things get fun. Alright so come on back we'll show you how this all works out in the end. constructing our coconut brownies into our lightly greased 9 by 13 baking pan that we have here. I just want to say, make sure again that you all keep your kitchen environment clean. Wipe it down, keep it clean at all times, make sure you're washing your hands through the whole course of cooking, especially if you're touching anything, because that's extremely important. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now with my hands because, because we're going to be using them in this layering technique, or stage three, as I call it, of this coconut brownie recipe. So, impeccably clean hands in an impeccably clean environment. And that's important because why? Because you don't want to get your friends, family, and loved ones sick, and you don't want to have them calling you up the next day, telling you that they're sick, and knowing pretty much why they are. So, <laughs> save the embarrassment, keep clean. All right, sounds good. We've rolled up our sleeves for this portion of the show because we're going to get down and dirty with the hands. So, let's go ahead and show you what we're going to do here. All right, we've got our completed mixture here, our brownie mixture here. We've got some coconut right here that we're going to go ahead and use and layer. And again, like I said, at this point, Make sure you've got a lightly greased 9x13 baking pan and that your oven is preheated at 350 degrees. All right? So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do, you, we're going to go ahead and layer half of this brownie mixture into this pan. Now it's not going to look like a lot because, as you know, brownies themselves are not real thick. So let's see if we can do it a couple ways here. I don't want to, you got to be careful because I don't want to obviously put too much of this in here. Just enough to layer the bottom a little bit. Like about that. Okay, you gotta kinda eye it and judge it. Okay? Just a little bit. Like that. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. So, let's take our spoon here. Again, you can use a spatula. I use a wooden spoon, like that. And we're just gonna go ahead, and this brownie mixture is thick. So you just kind of have to layer it a little bit, all right? Just like I'm doing here. It's probably a little bit more I need to add in here. I just want to make sure. What you really want to do is you want to get a good, a good cement fixture on this. You want to make sure that it's at least covered, okay? <laughs> and so I need another set of hands, actually, just like that. So that's what we're doing here. You just got to kind of layer it out. You know, again, you know when you're working with cakes and brownie mixtures, it's very thick. And so you have to just be patient and work with it. Okay? It's not a very oozy type of a thing here. All right. So we're just going to do this here. Maybe a little bit more. I think we can. And you got to play around with this, but like I said, you just kind of want to at least get the, the cement down first before you do anything else. All right, let's see what happened there. We need that. 
we'll, we'll clean all this up. Like I said, you know, cooking sometimes is not the most clean as far as, you know, things happening around you. And that's the fun of cooking because you just never know sometimes what is going to happen. So, all right. Now, the reason I didn't pour a lot of this in because you really want to make sure, you really want to make sure that you don't overdo your first layering here. And we're working toward that. You know, sometimes you got to just be patient. You just got to be patient sometimes and let it work for you. Okay? And that's what we're doing here. Again, we just want to make sure we get enough that we can layer in our little goodness here in just a second. Okay, just like that. See, the, the easy part is once you get it on, the rest we just pour right on top. That's, that's the easy part, is getting this first layering in like so, all right? And just making sure it's smooth across because you don't want to have too much in the middle or on the sides. So that's what we're doing here, okay? Just like that, all right? Like I said, we'll clean all that up before we, uh, before we get that in the oven there. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna clean my hands again because I got chocolate all over them. And I don't want to have a sticky chocolate when I'm trying to layer our first layering of coconut, which is what we're gonna do right now, all right? Also, I'm going to go ahead out of camera here in a second and just, we're going to wipe this, we're going to wipe this down just a bit, like so, because we don't want to have a lot of that going on either when we're putting that in the oven and such. So, just like that, and this side, ah, I think that's pretty good. All right, so that's good. Just go ahead and put that over there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and layer in a little bit of coconut. What you can do is take about, you're going to take about half of the coconut to layer in. So you just eyeball this and just go ahead and take, like I said, just pick whatever side or half you want and just sprinkle it in like so. And that's it. Just, like I said, just about a half. And it don't have to be completely saturated. Just make sure you get a good, a good layering around the whole pan, okay? Because what you're going to see what's going to happen here in just a bit. And uh, again, try to keep your half for the last topping. All right, something like that, that's good. Now what's gonna happen, you'll see in a second here. Now we're gonna put the rest of this batter on top of this coconut, all right? And so what's gonna happen, you may see, which wouldn't surprise me because it's thick, that it's gonna swirl around a little bit. You know, you're gonna, don't get upset. Let's see here, if I can do it like this. Don't get upset if you start to find that your coconut is moving around, and I'll show you what's gonna happen here in just a bit, okay? Try to do this in spots, all right? Because it's thick, it's, it's important just to kind of, you know, do this in spots across and around your pan, like I'm doing here, okay? See how that's going on, okay? You don't wanna start mixing this all up and around. All right, just make sure you get as much as you can up and over this here, like so. Okay, just like that. This is where the kids can have fun, too. They can, uh, again, layer the coconut, because all it really is is you're sprinkling it on, just around. Now, you see how that's kind of already kind of going over the coconut a little bit, like so? Now, like I said, don't be too concerned again if the, some of the coconut comes up on the second layer because we're going to put coconut on, coconut on top of it anyway. So, you can get as much as you can of all of this as well. And again, because it's very thick and it'll get thicker as it sits, it, uh, you know, a little goes a long way here. So, that. And then what we're going to do here in just a second is kind of try to spread this out the best that we can without making too much of a mess. But I think you get the idea of what's going on here. We're layering. We've got a cement of the brownie mixture here, the chocolate brownie mixture. And then we've gone ahead and layered in the first layering or the first floor with coconut. This would be the second floor. 
with another layer of brownie mix going on. All right, that's pretty good like that. What we're going to go ahead and try attempt to do here, you kind of just kind of have to place all this in place. You know, try to cover the areas that you didn't get it in. You're going to have to just be careful because what's going to happen is it's going to want to stick to your spatula or your wooden spoon. Okay, so you're just going to have to kind of layer it all in like so. And you're, you're going to get a little bit of, like I said, the coconut layering is going to kind of go on top. Okay, like that. All right, and that's pretty good. It's all going to settle in like so. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead, ah, and this right here, is a kid's delight. Let me tell you. This is <laughs> you want to make your child happy, give them a spoon. Trust me. 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes of happiness right there. Let's go ahead and take the rest of our coconut. We're just going to go ahead and sprinkle it on top like so. Just evenly sprinkle it out. This is the best part. I would well, the second the best part, I'd say this whole recipe because by this point you've already got all your 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 heavy work done. You've got all the the layering done. It's all in here in the pan. Now it's fun time, you know? And like I said too, like before, you know, perfect thing for one of the kids to do. Or a spouse, friend, loved one. Get them to help, you know? If they want to, if they want to eat the goodness, they should work for it, right? <laughs> That's what I say. That's what I say. All right. That's great. That's exactly what we want. You're not going to get it completely, completely covered in white. You, you can, but you kind of want to have a little bit of the chocolate kind of marbling out from the coconut itself. So what we have here is that going on right now. All right, I'm going to wash my hands again for a second because that sweetened coconut has sugar in it. And that sugar, if you play around that coconut enough, will start sticking to your hands and get them all sticky. So, because we're going to be doing one more thing here. Now, I told you in the beginning when we were introducing these ingredients that I had some coarse sea salt here, right? Now, I don't know. What would you think I'll be doing next, right? There ain't much left to go here, so I guess I'll probably be putting this on top, right? Now, that might sound a little strange for a brownie recipe, right? Putting salt on top. Of a, of a brownie? That doesn't sound right. Work with me here, trust me. Just work with me. This coarse sea salt will be fantastic. It will give a very varied flavor. Salty and sweet. I know y'all have had that before. If you've seen my show on my chocolate chip and brownie cookies, or chocolate chip and bacon cookies. <laughs> Work with brownies here. <laughs> Thinking of too much on brownie. Chocolate chip, the chocolate bacon chip brownies, or the chocolate chocolate chip and brownie. I, I see, I can't say it. The chocolate chip and bacon cookies. There we go. There we go. Gotta love live. Gotta love live segments here. That is very similar. Very similar to what we're doing here in giving the salty and sweet flavor. So that's what's going on with that. So I've just gone ahead and sprinkled some of that on top. Now we're going to go ahead, take this and put it into our 350 degree preheated oven. We're going to leave that in for 30 minutes. Now, normally what you would do in any baked good is you would go ahead and insert a knife in the middle to see if it's done. If it comes out clean, you know it's pretty well baked. This particular recipe is going to go in the refrigerator once it's cooled off for eight hours or overnight. So you don't need to be concerned about the middle at this point. This is going to be a cold dessert in the end. So you don't even have to check it. 30 minutes at 350 will be good for you. Just do that and then uh, what we're going to do is we'll come back and we'll show you how this turned out and then uh, after that we're going to have to let this sit for overnight and come back and then we will go ahead and do a presentation for you. So let me get this in the oven first or well, we ain't going to be doing nothing. <laughs> All right, and I see here that I need to bring my rack. This is important too. This is a very important tip, by the way. You know, like I said, sometimes just things come up. But you know what? If you if you cook a lot and you move your rack around a lot, depending on what you're cooking or what you're doing, sometimes if you don't 
put it back to where you need to be, you may have to make sure that it's positioned right. So make sure on this, and for most recipes, that it's in the center rack of your oven. I was broiling something for another show, and so my rack happened to be a little bit higher up. And we don't want to burn these brownies, we just want to cook them, that's all. All right, so we've got uh, our rack in our center place. We have our delicious coconut brownies in the oven right now. When we come back, we're going to go ahead and pull those out and show you how they turned out at this point. And then after that, we're going to let them sit for a while, come back, and then we're going to do a final presentation and show you how yeehaw yum they turned out, all right? So come on back. Well, all right, we're back, and I'm going to go ahead right now and turn my back on you for just a second because we're going to take our mmm, yeehaw yum coconut brownies out of the oven right now. They should be done. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're done. They are perfect. Set that on our rack right here. All right. There. Now, we have perfectly baked coconut brownies. Now, if you look at this, you can see that there's a really nice golden brown coloring and texture from the oven with the coconut. So, right there, it's just on the verge of almost burnt, but it's not. And the caramelization of that and the whole brownness of that is what's going to really make these fantastic when we cut into them and try them a little bit later. But unfortunately, alas, alas, I know, we have to go ahead and let these cool off. So get yourself a wire rack and put them on. It's going to be a couple hours before these babies are, being, are going to be ready to be foiled up, covered up in foil, and put in the refrigerator. Now, I do these the night before. I'm going to serve them or present them at some function or something of another. They should really probably be called overnight coconut brownies, really, because you need at least six to eight hours of time for these to cool. These are what I call a cold brownie or a cool brownie, and the reason you need to cool these down is because the chemistry with the cold and the other ingredients create this fantastic, almost like fudge type brownie. It's just incredible. You'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the uh, trying stage, the presentation stage of this uh, episode here, which we're going to show you here in the next segment. But for now, I'm going to leave you guys here, and we're going to let these cool for a little while. I'm going to throw these in the refrigerator, covered again with aluminum foil for overnight, and then uh, we'll come back for our last segment. We'll do a presentation, a little bit of a test to see how they came out, and our adios and goodbye. So, we'll see you in a little while. Well, all right, we're back. We are back the next morning here, and we've let our coconut brownie sit in the refrigerator overnight and got nice and chilled and hard. And now what you want to do is take those out, uncover them, and let them sit at room temperature for about a half an hour. The reason you want to do this before cutting these is because they're going to be hard. I mean, they're going to be very hard because it's a fudgy kind of brownie, and when you put something like that in the refrigerator, it all gets nice and firm. So if you try cutting them straight from taking them out of the refrigerator, it's going to be tough for you to do. And what's also going to happen is that the, uh, the, the goodness on the bottom is going to stick. You're not going to be able to get the full brownie out because that's all fudge goodness that's uh, encompassed there toward the bottom. So you need to let that sit for about a half an hour at room temperature. It'll still be a little cool, 
but it would be nice enough and, and, and I would say thought out enough to go ahead and cut into slices. Now, this, uh, this 9 by 13 pan of brownies will make 12 good sized brownies. And I'll show you here in the presentation plate in just a moment what I'm talking about. So you can get a dozen of these out of this recipe. You can cut them up smaller too if you want to do them for a little bit more of a of a finger food appetizer type thing, uh, but 12 good sized brownies are the yield for this recipe. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and walk over here, or stand over here by my presentation plate here. You can see we've got this beautiful coconut brownie going on. It, I'm smelling the pan behind me. This chocolate goodness is so fantastic. and. If you look at this, I mean, you can just see it's encompassed with this nice toasted coconut and it's just got a very fudgy type of a consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and take a fork here and just take a little corner off this and uh, give this one a shot here and uh, see, how we, uh, see how we fare out here. Let me do this here without trying to move this plate too much. All right. Mm, I can't wait. Mmm. Mmm. Let me tell you folks, that gets a major yeehaw yum. That is yeehaw yum good. You know what it reminds me of? Every time I every time I make this and I taste it, it reminds me, and I, I'm not gonna mention the brand name. I'll, I'll give you a clue though. It, it rhymes with mount. It rhymes with bounds. I almost said it. It rhymes with bounds and starts with an M. Those little candy bars that you get. That's exactly what this tastes like. You've got this great dichotomy of flavors going on. I can taste a little bit of that 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 sea salt that we sprinkled on top, which is giving it kind of a little bit of a salty, but certainly not overpowering combination to this really rich sweet chocolate these three chocolates that are in this brownie you've also got this wonderful toasted coconut outside and in because we layered that in so you've got this encompassed in with this chocolate goodness the flavors are amazing now you've also got remember we put those bittersweet chunks in there you've got little chunks of that bittersweet chocolate that just surprise you when you bite into each piece of this it really is truly a gourmet brownie and if you want to impress people at a potluck or a family get together or if you've got company coming in and you want a nice dessert go ahead and make this you could probably even drizzle some chocolate around it you could probably even maybe use a little bit of whipped cream on it if you like a little bit of ice cream you could serve it up as an ice cream sidecar with that as well so many possibilities if you want to go ahead and even step this up another degree so that's it. That is our coconut brownie recipe for you today. That's about all the time we have for on this episode of the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show. Now, Chef Ron Locke here is going to tell you, as I always do at the end of the show, what do I say? Get off that couch and get to cooking. We'll see you next time.